In this video, we're going to talk about another way of animating motion in a sound, and that's the arpeggiator. Now, I have a simple single layer patch called up here, and I'm going to play you a part with some sustain chords, and this is what it sounds like as is. Now, with the arpeggiator, we get to it with this tab over here, it breaks apart the notes in the chord and plays them in sequence, in an order. Now we can turn it on with the power button here and there are a variety of presets. So I'll just go through a couple and you can hear what this same part sounds like with a couple of presets. So you get the idea. Now let's look at the parameters. There are different modes that we can have it play the notes back in. As played means as we played them in when we recorded the original notes, but we can have them play them as a chord, meaning all the notes will sound each time there's a step. We see the pattern over here. We adjust the number of steps here up to a maximum of 32 steps. And this pattern has eight steps. And these indicate when a step is being triggered and when it's silent, it's dark like that and the thickness indicates the length and the height indicates the velocity. So let's hear this one with chord mode. It can break the notes up in an ascending motion or descending or alternating between up and down or up and down with the plus sign, meaning when it gets to the bottom note, it repeats it before it starts in the opposite direction and similarly down up and down up where it repeats the top note. You can randomize it as played, which it started with as default, or we can repeat each note twice or each note four times. So let's go into up down for now. Next, we have different trigger modes. And like we've seen in other areas of the interface, we have legato song positioner note. So let's try legato and it's gonna re-trigger whenever new notes happen, but not these overlapping notes. So let me increase the length of this pattern. We'll have a couple of silent steps at the end, but you'll see it play through and not re-trigger after these steps over here. So it plays through the whole pattern and only re-triggers and jumps to the beginning when there's a new note on and nothing is overlapping. Now, when we're in note mode, it'll re-trigger every time there's a new note. And song position is tied to the position of the actual DAW. So again, here we'll start from second beat. It was a sustained note, so it didn't start right in the middle, but it's tied to the position in the DAW. Let's leave it in legato mode. Now this determines the rate at which it's gonna break it apart. 16th notes are what was set on this pattern, but we can go to eight to 30 seconds. Or any degree of triplets, etc. dotted notes as well. Let's go back to 16th notes. Now we have a speed control and this is nice. We can offset this from the actual speed of the host DAW. So if you wanna get a, slightly behind the beat feel, you can slow it down a bit. In this case, it's good to have it re-trigger more often so it doesn't get too off with the pulse. Or you can get slightly ahead of the beat. It's a little sloppy. And we can go all the way up and get multiples of the actual tempo. For example, all the way up is eight times the speed or one eighth of the speed and anywhere in between. And I'm gonna command click to snap it back. Now length offsets the length of each step so that we can get each step to be shorter or more legato sounding. Mm -hmm. 
Now we also have octave controls where we can determine over how many octaves the notes are gonna be spread apart. One was the default on this patch, but let's try two octaves. We can go three or four. Let's go back to one. Now the velocity slider is really an interesting parameter. It determines how much the velocity of the incoming notes affects the dynamics of the arpeggiator pattern. So basically, the more we move this to the minimum values, the more we're gonna use or hear the velocities as set by the arpeggiator steps. And the more we move it to the maximum value, the more it's gonna be the initial velocities that the notes were played in with. So let's move it here and we can really grammatize the velocities here to sort of hear a difference between some steps being quieter and some being louder. Let's hear that. I'll keep those two loud. Now we can program our own patterns very easily. Let's just go back to the top. We're gonna to go back to a blank pattern. We determine the length of the pattern with this. And I like using odd numbers of patterns, depending on the style of music, of course. So for example, 12 steps in a 4-4 pattern would be a little bit of an unusual cycle where it would repeat irregularly, which could be interesting. So we just click these to turn the different steps on. We can adjust the velocity by dragging the stocks. And we can tie notes or make them longer by double clicking the adjacent step to the right so we can get longer steps like that. And we can do finer increments for the length of the notes by holding shift and then dragging to get finer resolution for how long we want the notes. Let's see what this one sounds like. So that's an interesting simple pattern. We can also transpose the individual steps. And this is new for Omnisphere 2.0, it's nice. We have this field above here, we can click hold and transpose any step that we want, any amount. And you can have a lot of fun with that and we can transpose up or down, of course. Now the arpeggiator gets really interesting when we add in delay effects because it sort of creates another rhythmic offset in addition to these notes. Now in this patch, in the effects section, we haven't looked at this yet, but the effects are per patch in this mode over here. There's a delay I'd bypassed. I'm gonna put it on now. We'll look at the effects separately, but here's the same thing with a little bit of delay added. So it's a nice way to maximize the effect of using arpeggiator type patterns. And finally, we have drag and drop possibilities here, Groove Lock, where we can drag MIDI files or Stylus RMX files onto here and have the arpeggiator snap to the values based on the rhythm of the MIDI file. Similarly to when we looked in the envelopes in the, one of the earlier videos where we can drag MIDI files there, you can do the same thing here. Now, for example, let me just hide this for a moment. And I have an RMX pattern used here. So let me open up RMX and we can just drag the pattern over here. And before we do that, let's start with maybe something a little fuller here. Go to one of these types of patterns, maybe this one. So there's the name of the file and we can see all these dots and that's how it'll be locked together with the feel of the arpeggiator. And we can also load in regular MIDI files simply by clicking here and we get a file browser and we can load anything in that way. And we have a strength slider so we can determine how much we want it to follow the feel of the file that's dragged in. So that's the arpeggiator section. I'll see you for more in the next video.